Yeah. Many, this many, is many. Northern years Ireland. Ago. Yeah, it is. Yeah. People are specific. Yeah. Different accent, even. They say, "Welcome to Northern Ireland." So I'm glad to be in Northern Ireland. Oh, it's a different country, Sean. And it's a whole. It's farther north. <laughs> the uh, my, if you don't mind, I'm just going to share that my heritage, my from three generations back to nine generations back, all of our people were in Longford. Hey, the proud feet. The proud. Remember. Uh, yeah, so long for <laughs> proud feet. <laughs> yes. So, but yeah, so my my cousins know some of our my cousins in America know some of our cousins removed here. So I'm just saying I'm looking for um, Irish dual citizenship. Oh. This is my ulterior motive. <laughs> well, what does it feel like for you guys to be reunited? Is it like you haven't missed a beat? What, what us seeing each other? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Well, we see each other actually pretty frequently now. Yeah. We're on a text thread. <laughs> I saw you last weekend. We see each other all the time. <laughs> I work husband. There you go. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, we're, we're family. And, and the thing about having spent four years together, having made, you know, three movies together, everyone who worked on those films is linked for the rest of our lives. And, and years could go by and we'll see someone and it feels like no time has passed. It's the nature of the time spent together, you know? And he's cute. <laughs> he's pretty cute. <laughs> I'm cute. So much cuteness on this stage. Well, obviously, Comic-Con represents so many different franchises, films, and TV. What are you guys fans of? What are you watching film and TV-wise that might, you might have seen represented here? Oh, okay. Can we not, we, yeah. Can't start naming. Even things we're not in? No. No. Oh, no. So, uh, I don't know if you all know this, but we have a union. We're in the Actors Union. SAG-AFTRA is the name of our union. And, and frustratingly, currently, our union is on strike. So we're, well, you're goddamn right. Uh, sorry for the children. But the, um, yeah, so one of the things that we're doing is we're not talking about films by title that are films that profit the, um, the struck companies, the big streamers and studios and networks. So we've been doing these convention uh, Q and A's and talks about everything <laughs> under the sun besides those things. We refer to them, he said, those films, we knew what you meant. Yes. Yes, we knew what you meant. So we will find- The walking movies that we shot in New Zealand. <laughs> yes. With the jewelry, yes. <laughs> but let me just say, whatever fandom you like, I like. Even if I haven't watched it yet, my philosophy is, and this comes from doing these conventions for 25 years now. <laughs> 22, 23 years of conventions. That's a lot of conventions. Um, when I would see things, the thing about the, um, the blue telephone box, or the people who weren't, um, fully dead anymore, or any of these kinds of things, or... I love the people that weren't dead anymore. I love that show so much. Especially the, the movie that was the comedy about the people that weren't dead anymore. Yes. By Edgar Wright. Yeah. I, love, I love that movie. Yeah. So, but my, my point is, even though I never liked those kind of movies at all, I would see how much the fans love them, and I would think to myself, if it's lasting six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, something about it is good. So then I find myself at a certain moment on an airplane, in a hotel, something or other, and it would pop up and I'd think, okay, here's my time to explore these no longer living creatures. Or somewhere between here and there. And I love it. Invariably, anything that has a big fandom that I wander into uh, except for one, no, I'm not going to say that. There is, well, there's, yeah. that, there's that one that's in the, in the 80s that you were in, that was set in the 80s that you shot oh, more recently. Yeah. That's got a really big fandom yes, associated with yes. it. Yes, it didn't go so well for me on that one. Not so well. Oh, yeah. It did not. Hmm. That but anyhow, we, so we can talk about anything. The last show we did, I talked for 25 minutes about my daughter and her driver's license. No news to report. It's true. Yeah. Oh, really? No, no news? No news, no news. A lot of news and then no news. 
He really wants to teach his daughter how to drive, and his daughter is just getting a standard, you know, like driver's course, driver's ed or whatever. And he feels like, as a father, it is his duty, and just also like, you know, her right. birthright. It's my is, right. Is yeah, to to be able to learn from her father, and she refuses this. Yeah. Um, because it, I'm it, a bad driver. It really. <laughs> She's like, Dad, you're not a very good driver. Don't you want me to make good choices? <laughs> I'm, a, but, I'm a good driver. I are feel. you? I feel like I am. I believe that. Yeah. Remember, do you remember that time? So we were in New Zealand, as you may know, for years, making these walking movies. Um, and on, on there a are we, flying movies, too, on the way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We fly. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. Just briefly, though. Very brief. <laughs> um, but we, it was a weekend, and we were, we were having dinner at someone's house on Arrow Street, and we had, we had already lived there for like a year. So I was used to driving on the other side of the road and I was driving us and I made, it's raining. Here comes the rain again. Um, so I made a right onto oncoming traffic. Do you remember this? And somehow we avoided getting hit, and you're like, I don't know how we didn't get hit. You were like, it, it was as if the car went through us. I don't know, maybe it did. Pretty crazy. Just seeing if you're real. But we narrowly avoided disaster. Uh, I have no recollection of this, but this Good, is- I'm glad, because this, be this is this man's experience. <laughs> At 20 years old, the kinds of situations that he would find himself in while working were dangerous. I think some of them were flat out dead. Now, I have a reputation as being the guy who worries too much. But he, he would be put in these situations, and he just had absolute trust and faith that someone's job is to make it safe, and I'll just trust them. And I'm like, have you not met people? Not everyone is trustworthy. <laughs> and even if they are, people are working really hard. And so, and, and, and then I'm the one who got hurt all the time. <laughs> I was the one who worried. Maybe I made myself get hurt by being a guy who worries too much. I, I, drew, I drew the injuries to me. My foot, the thing fell on my head. Right. There was always something. Yeah, and you were always fine. If you're more, maybe it's that thing of um, if you're more rigid, you're more apt to be yes. injured. But if you're more like fluid, then yes. you take injuries less. I fall really well because I'm not, I don't fall with yes. concern. Yeah, there's something to that. There's no bones. I will say, being a father now, because now I'm a father and I've got two kids. <laughs> yeah, all right, shout out to all the dads and the moms. Um, I recently made a film in New Zealand, an independent film not associated with the Strzok companies, um, where I had, to, I had to sort of shimmy across a rope that was drawn across a chasm. Now, of course, that was retrofitted with multiple lines that I was attached to, safety wires, so on and so forth. But I feel like it was the first time that I was a little nervous. And I think something about maybe being a father now and having kids, like the stakes are higher, so, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, was, I, I would have jumped into that maybe with a little bit more, not carelessness, but, I, you know, kind of oomph in the past. And I think I was a little bit more like, where, where are the lines connected? <laughs> like, a little more cautious. That's what I would do. I'd walk onto the set and look at everything and yeah, who's yeah, tied yeah. down. The and, riggings. But they, I don't mind taking risks. No, no. You know, if you're doing a stunt or if you're, whatever it is, I just like them to be calculated yeah. and, you know, precautions taken, and then you do it, and hopefully you don't get hurt, but if you do, you're, like, aware of why you did it. But some of the things we were doing on those films down there was really... We got, is he here? Mm -hmm. Should we...? I believe. Um, thank you for being here. <laughs> How no more laughing. Uh oh Game's over. Bernard, how are you enjoying Belfast so far? How are you enjoying Belfast? Yeah, Belfast is great. I've been here before. <laughs> I've been here quite a lot before. You made a movie here. I made three movies in the, here, smaller ones, you know. 
I have to ask, <laughs> we've been discussing this, uh, we were discussing yesterday, have you been to the Titanic Museum and Hotel, or is it something you plan to do while in Belfast? <laughs> the Titanic Museum and Hotel. Have I can you see it before? from my hotel. Yes. And they've painted the cranes yellow yep. so that the Americans will be able to identify them. <laughs> <laughs> and we can, and they're lovely. They are. So there's a, a hotel and a museum dedicated to the Titanic just here. Yeah, it wasn't my fault. I advised against it. I said it'll only sink. The museum, I mean. Would you gentlemen like to take some fan questions? Should we go to the audience? Sure, yeah. Let's do it, guys. I know you have a lot of questions ready. Just go ahead and come up to the microphone here, but let's keep it vague, guys. It's your chance to keep all the questions random and fun. Again, we're not mentioning specific titles or roles, so just make it fun and random, yeah? How are you? Come on up. Um, I would like to ask Sean a question. Well, I was going to oh. ask, what's his favorite role he's ever portrayed? My favorite role? Mm -hmm. Sausage. Fa father. Sausage? Sausage role? Um, <laughs> the one that we worked on together is pretty special. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Generally, when there, when there isn't a strike on and I can answer the question freely, I would talk about um, movies that are much lesser known. You know, it's so great to have been a part of projects that are really embraced by large, you know, audiences. But then some of the things you work so hard on and you're so passionate about and, and um, two people see it. <laughs> so maybe that's even special because those two people understand. So, yeah. So when I come back to Belfast, I'll tell you all the ones I mean. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi there. Hi, nice to meet you. You are my childhood heroes. So, you are really related to New Zealand in your life, in your professional life. Um, actually, those are the antipodes from Spain, where I come from. And I would like to visit New Zealand, and I would like if you could tell me some place that you have, like, a really nice memory that I should really go there, that you really still have in your heart from there, from New Zealand. Good question. New Zealand recommendations. Gotcha. New Zealand, everywhere. 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 It's pretty big. And everywhere. There are special spots that stand out more, but I just love being in New Zealand. I love being there every day. I loved it. And I love going to work. I love listening to the radio in the morning on the way to work. And then I enjoyed the, the, right, the, the, the trip to the stables and getting on my horse and then ride into the set. I mean, what can be bad about that? And there's a lot of sheep. Uh, sheep are too small. <laughs> well, Qu Queenstown. <laughs> Queenstown's in the, the southern part of the South Island and it is... Um, they have perfected the art of hurtling your body through space. You can do it in any one of a number of ways. You can jump off a mountain, you can jump out of a, off a bridge, you can be on a jet boat, you can have motorcycles, you can do, there's a million ways to move your body around. And, and the idea of adventure is alive in, in, you know, I don't think, yeah. What did you do when you were there? What did you do in... Uh, I, did, I did all of that. I, what, you, I, did, did, you did parapenting? Parapenting, did parapenting, yeah. And then you, you, you The did. only reason I did parapenting, which is basically they unfurl the parachute on the, on the bald spot on the top of the mountain, and then you start walking down, and as the air that comes up the mountain, it lifts up the parachute. So you're walking, walking, and now you're lifting, and now you're basically parachuting down. So it's, it doesn't have the kinetic feeling of jumping out of a plane, but it's, it's parachuting. And the old, I didn't want to do it, I was too scared, but my wife wanted to do it, and so she did it, and then I thought, I, I have to do it, or else I'll never hear the end of it. Did you do a bungee jump? I did a bungee jump, yeah. Yeah, tell, that was, it was dumb. Tell them what a bungee jump is. You know bungee jumping. So uh, the Kawara Bridge, 
in the South uh, Island is in Queenstown. It's on the, on the uh, Kawara River. And I, we went to lunch that day, at the late Andrew Jack. Andrew Jack. And his wife. And uh, Christine, my wife, and I went to uh, the vineyard. They had a, a wonderful restaurant just across from the Kawara Bridge. And we knew that that day, Orlando and Vigo and others, maybe the, oh, was it, you weren't there. I no, there, no. But they, they were going to go to uh, a place with a, where they're going to bungee jump from a trolley, you know, one of those like, okay, it, cable, it, the, the ne cable car. The, ne the Nevis. The Nevis Bridge, yeah, 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 right. So, and we went to this dinner saying, lunch saying, these guys, you know, first of all, they can hurt themselves, which is totally irresponsible. And, you know, we just slagged them off for, and then we had a couple of glasses of wine, and when I came out, I said, well, let me go look at it. So we walked across, and I said, I want to do it. And they said, what are you talking about? What about everything we just said? I was like, I just want to do it. So we paid the $400 or whatever, and they put your feet up, and you stand out on the little platform, and the person said, I'm going to count backwards from five. Five, and I jumped. I didn't want them counting me down. I don't want them controlling my life. I control my life. <laughs> uh, and it was, uh, it was all right. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. I almost threw up all the lovely lunch we just ate, but it was pretty good. What was at the bottom? What was at the, uh, the, what was the, the, river. the river? It was the river. Yeah. They said, do you want to get wet or not? I said, not. And I do not want to get wet. Because what if they make it too long by, you know, a foot, and you hit just a little harder than you're supposed to. <laughs> Anyhow, it's a stupid thing. I don't recommend it, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah. It flushes your teeth quite well. <laughs> if, you, if you sign up for the wet bit. And I did motorcycling. Uh, Orlando and I went and rented right, motorcycles, right. and we were going all over, and it was fantastic. And the, the guide that's with us said, just don't go up that mountain. So Orlando went right up that mountain, and uh, Classic the, the, the guy and I, the, the, the guide and I, stopped riding for a second. We're looking around, and we hear, "Hello, hello, mate, hey, mate." And we look, and it's Orlando. He can't get down. And the guy said, "Fucking classic." Yeah, man. He, he goes, he goes, "You got yourself up there, man. I told you not to. You got to figure out how to get it down." And he came down like a cat crawling off of a 12-story building. <laughs> <laughs> but he did it, and he was fine. And at the bottom, he was, baby, it was great. You want to go back up again? We're like, no, we don't want to do that again. And that's, I mean, that's what we did. Basically, the, the movie company gave us all a list of th activities we were not to participate in because they were dangerous and would... Yeah. It would Suggestions of things not to do. Yeah, and then that became a to-do list. Well, I didn't have any choice, really, did I? I'm a, I was a horseman. One of, the, one of the don't do's was riding a horse for the insurance. And then they said, okay, get up on that, um, that thing over there that's not a horse and sit on it until we tell you that it's okay to get off. And that was it. And I, that's how I learned to ride. <laughs> that's not brilliant. enough. That's not enough. It's not enough. No. <laughs> so they said, do it every day. Okay. 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 Every day. Thank you so much. Actors, it, when, you, when actors are asked if they can do certain skills. Yeah, I can do it. I can do it, yeah. yeah. Can. You never say no. It's always yes. I can ski. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you speak no, Russian? I, I can. Of course I can speak <laughs> Russian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you think I am? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then somehow between the time you get the job and the time you show up, you I've have to learn Russian. All. I've lost it all. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, I don't know if there are many jobs like that, improvisational lying. It's all like that. Yeah. You've got to pretend to be so many different things and have so much accomplishments in different areas about of living and adjusting yourself <laughs> to, to the rest of society. Of course, you never turn it down because you lose the role. Anyway, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you just make me think of leadership, the idea of leadership. And as I've, you know, I'm 52 years old now, and I've, I've always 
settle down. It happens. Uh, <laughs> the idea, to me... If it, you, know, you, just say, you just say that Elijah's not 22 anymore. No. 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 Forty, you're not, what? 42. You're not? No. How old are you? you you're still, I was joking. You still look 19. <laughs> <laughs> no, he has kids. He's got a couple of kids. Have you? Frodo has kids. Who told you how to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Your big brother. Dirty bastard. <laughs> well, the character I played had 13 children, so he might have taught him a thing or two. Yeah, yeah. But the, the idea of leadership, I always thought of the speeches that you give, the, the rousing, you know, getting people, you know, getting the gumption up to go and fight or follow you or do something. And what I've realized a little bit later is sometimes leadership is really sort of acknowledging when you don't know something. If you can, yes, yes, that's true. I think, I think that's true. You have to be a good follower before you can be a good leader. That's what I'm saying. Ah. True? True, yeah, I think so. We're all learning. We have a question here from this lovely lady. Hi. Hello. Um, I have a question for Sean. Uh, when you were playing the role Bob in Stranger Things, what was your favorite scene to film? I can answer the question that if there's ever a project I've worked on where I got to kiss the girl, that was my favorite part about doing that project. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hiya. Hi. Um, so first of all, thanks for being here. It's really, really cool to see you guys here. But my question is, without trying to say any names, um, so Elijah, I watched a film last night of yours where you had a kind of crazy interaction with your father. And obviously, when you were not in the 80s, Sean, you had a very chaotic, frantic scene. And so my question is, when any of you guys are playing a scene that's obviously like really intense, like high energy, something could go wrong, but also something could really work. How do you get into that headspace before you start filming? Like, what, what goes through your head before you're about to do something crazy? I have long sessions with Ian McKellen. Yeah. Have long sessions with Ian McKellen. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> that'll, set, that'll sort you out. That'll prime the pump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I mean... That's your question, sorry. No, I mean, I think it depends on the scenario. I think what you were watching, oh boy, <laughs> was, was my father trying to kill me? Yeah. A little bit, a little bit, yeah. So that, in that case, it's like <laughs> just reacting to Steve McCaddy, who's totally fucking crazy, coming at me with insane energy. Um, but, you know, depending on where the energy is coming from, if it's coming from your character, there's a sort of sense of, like, wanting to amp yourself up into that space. Um, that's part of the fun of what we do is, is you know, trying to harness a, a degree of energy and sort of replicate it in that moment and let that moment be kinetic and alive, you know. But it's as much about reacting to the people that you're acting opposite as well. That helps. There, there was um, something that I, I, I feel like it's overstating it to call it a technique, but there was a thing on the film that we worked together on where before almost every take, I would bark. <laughs> New story. I would bark really loud. <laughs> <laughs> and what I was trying, what I realized was that it would, that gesture would sort of put blood towards my stomach and it would, and it would, uh, like the capillaries in my face. <laughs> I didn't know, what, I didn't understand what I was doing, but I just, there's a way in which when you have been sitting for many hours, which filmmaking is mostly about waiting around, not doing anything for the actors, yep. punctuated by the moments of terror where you have to be doing something exceptionally well, <laughs> and, then, and then it's over. And, and it's very easy to just kind of have a dead face. Not just your face, like a face that you make smile, don't smile, but just to have your energy, the blood not in your, uh, you know, just, just not circulating in your body. So we'd be sitting, and I did this technique, which actually, uh, I came to learn, 
is a technique that the fighter pilots use <laughs> in uh, F-16s. Stay, stay with me on this, Bernard. <laughs> Basically, um, when, you're, when you're pulling Gs in a fighter jet, the blood goes down into your feet. And so they will tighten their stomach up and go, hut, 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 and they're literally pushing the blood back up towards their head so they don't pass out. I figured that out all on my own, and that's what informed the performance that we're referring to. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> thank you guys so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Hi there. Hi, Yes. Um, so, love the walking movies, love the 80s movies. Brilliant. Um, but one of my personal faves, Sean, is a certain one you did that only got one season, where you played a father. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we're striking that company right yeah. now. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, my question is... That was my a, dream. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, okay. No, you go on. Okay. I just always... My little brother starred in a TV series uh, for several seasons in the 80s. And uh, he made a lot of money, and he had a regular job. Most acting jobs are not, um, you know, the, the schedules are not traditional. His was like going to a factory, and, I was, and, and there was an audience. Usually when you're doing films or television, there's not an audience. But on this sitcom, there was an audience. And I was always really jealous of it. So I got to do 20 episodes of that show mm -hmm. of performing in front of an audience and living that like factory life, and I just loved it. Mm -hmm. My question is, as an actor, what is it like to go into a project and put all your effort and time in, and then it be canceled and you're done and you don't get to finish that character? And they, yeah. they uh, a natural, natural uh, appearance or an occurrence every day, really. It's very hard to anticipate. Just have a look at the casting first. <laughs> and stay away from John Rhys Davis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look. The life of an actor is a life of triumph and tragedy. And at any given moment, both things are happening. And what separates uh, the people who are able to survive the tumult over time is uh, the word is uh, professionalism. When you're a professional, when they call your number, you show up. When, they, when you're fired, you're canceled, it's over, they pick someone else, you're done, you go back and you wait for the next opportunity. So the real disappointment with that one was the writers had come up with a whole next season mm. and they sat us all down and they told us what it was gonna be and it was a million times better than the first season. And, uh, but the business model of the streamers is now um, really hard to gauge. They don't do 20 episodes, they do six or eight. How many of us have watched shows now that you love and it's over just as you're, just as you're getting into the character? And they don't care. They don't care that the audience is not, they do on certain things, they're big tentpole ones. But on other ones, they've got the next show coming behind it and the next show coming behind it and the next show. So for actors to be able to make a living, uh, it's hard. And so that's why we're striking, because we put together um, you know, proposals that would protect the actor while they're taking 18 months, 27 months, 36 months to decide if they want to do another episode. Meanwhile, you can't do anything else. Three years of your life, you can't do anything without their permission. Mm -hmm. They could give you permission, but so that's what we're doing. We're trying to make it so that in this new world where space and time and storytelling is really you know, fluid that professional actors can rely on if they're l fortunate enough to get a job that they can actually make a living at it. Yeah. Elijah, what was it like being the guy? Fun. Yeah. It's fun. It was fun to watch. <laughs> it comes up a lot. It comes up a lot, that reference. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, I'm going to say those, um, now I have three questions for one for each of you. So Sean, um, 
Your 80s um, co-stars, Q, Khan, Juan, and Josh Brolin got nominated for Best Supporting Actor, but they are not the only ones that got nominated. It was you for a different category, and for Elijah, after doing the third film of the, that trilogy, how exhausted do you really feel? And for Bernard, how much um, research did you put to play the captain in that 1997 historical film? How much what? Research, right? Oh, research. Uh, well, there's no point looking uh, in the back in the background to look at research fed and because it, it, it's just uh, not a real person. And in the big ones recently, it was only Smith. Um, and I went and did a bit of research about what ships he'd been on other than, other, I mean, other, other than the Titanic and what, how did he, what was his standing within the White Star Line kind of hierarchy. Um, it turns out he was the favorite captain. He was the captain that every, they, got cho they got chosen to take ships out for the first time and um, he was he was the good guy you know what I mean and because he was not a particularly brilliant seaman um, but he looked like the captain he could walk around and you know have special meals at his table in the in the dining room and people would be honored to be a member of the a table when he invited them, and that was that was his pur purpose really. His purpose was was to be the perfect captain, and that's what I found out. It's, I mean, his his ability wasn't particularly brilliant. Really. Didn't need to be. He had so many people better than him uh, in the background, and you know, the Murdoch and second and third. Shipman and all that kind of stuff. And I suppose, in a way, it helped save the, the, a, a, a few lives when the ship was going down and needed somebody with, with order. <laughs> and it was left to Murdoch and some of the other officers while Smith fell apart, really. So he was no use when the ship was doomed just when he was needed the most. That's my story. <laughs> I think I forgot my question. What was my question again? Uh, how exhausted were you really after oh. you finished the third film of the trilogy? So exhausted. It's funny, I, you know, not, none of us had ever worked on anything for that long before. And it was total and complete. In our lives, we're in New Zealand. You know, the, the, the hours that we were working six day weeks on average. So it was, it was just an intense amount of work over a long period of time. Incredible, but a lot of work. So coming off of that, it was, yeah, very exhausting. <laughs> It was, yeah, I remember kind of going into a fog for like two to three weeks when I got home. Like I didn't quite, I couldn't quite make sense of, and I think also just when we work as actors, whether it's for 16 months or it's two months, it's immersive. It, you know, you, we, you go to another place for that period of time and there's a little, there's always a degree of separating from that reality when you've been in it. And again, that can be two months or two years, whatever it is. So I was just going through that process as well, just coming out of that and trying to assess what my life was because I, it was defined by other people and another place for so long. So I remember that being the predominant feeling as well. You know, just kind of like re-entering society was weird. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the literature upon which it's based has such great descriptions of the, the quality of tired 
Like what with the nature of being tired? Like are you tired because you just did 20 push-ups? Are you tired because you haven't slept? Are you tired because your mind's been on something for so long to solve a problem or because you're tasked to do something that you, your, your body is giving out because your brain has to do so much work? There's, you know, your spirit gets tired. We, we, we were pretty tired. Well, you, what was your question with me, for me? Oh, yeah, yeah. You, um, Key Khan and Josh Brolin, your oh, co-star. Brendan, uh, Brendan Fraser. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Brendan yeah. Fraser and Kiwi Kwan both On. won Academy Awards this year. Yeah. Very, and, very proud of my you colleagues. you were nominated for a different category. I was, I was nominated for, uh, for, a sh for an Academy Award for a short film that I made in 1997. 1994, uh, actually. Is it 94? All right. Yeah. I trust your word. Someone so, has done their research. Oh, Googled it. But I, I would say that there was, um, that we didn't win. That's all right. Uh, and, and we didn't come in second. There was a tie in our category. And I honestly thought our little short film was the second best short film. If you have to choose art, which is silly anyway. But that's the game. So, and when I saw Trevor, was the name of this one, about this little boy who is discovering his sexuality, that was the best one, for sure. And then ours was second best. And that's not what the Academy voters thought. They thought, uh, midnight, what it, it was called, um... What, your film? No, the, the film that beat us. And then there was another actress, she had a film. So they announced the two winning films, and I leaned forward to the actress whose film didn't win, and I said, well, we, we probably came in third. She, she didn't think that was funny. <laughs> she wasn't ready to joke just yet. Uh, but, <laughs> but the funny thing was the category that I was nominated in, my father was nominated in 15 years, 20 years earlier. So he came... A short film? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. The one that won his year was a Robert Kennedy documentary. And his was this really interesting little... Uh, I don't even know, there's this kind of character work that, that he was doing and he's sort of this lost man. He had his kids in the car, he was in the grocery store and he has this flirtation with a woman in the grocery store. And it's not even like, it's very kind of uh, um, esoteric and it was wonderful, it was brilliant. And it got him entree to a whole lot of like Fellini and other filmmakers who, were, who watched it and they're like, we, you know, it made the rounds. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you'd probably, you'd, I, I don't know where it is. It would be, you would love it. I know I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but anyhow, what are we talking about? Is this on? Hello? Sorry. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Remember him, Elijah? Who's that? It's Peter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Unfortunately, we have no more time for questions. We've got to get them back to the autograph area. I know. Sorry, guys. And to get your photo sorry, ops done. But just any, I know. I'm so sorry. But any final words for your fans here in Belfast? We're just so happy that you're here to make memories with us. Oh, we're, we're, we, we love getting to meet you all. This is always a thrill for us. I love to being able to, to see our friends and colleagues that we don't always get to see each other. Um, and Belfast rules. It's great to be here. Thank you, guys.